I uh, learned a big lesson. After the rifleman was over, um, you know, the uh, offers were pouring in. <laughs> and uh, um, not really, but... <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Word. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. Our friend Johnny Crawford, as most of you know, has Alzheimer's. He's slowly, slowly losing more and more of his memory. And he's in a good place, though. A lot of you out there have seen the tribute that we did to Johnny to help raise money. We held it at the McRae Ranch, uh, the Joel and Francis D. McRae Ranch, and Wyatt McRae, Darby Hinton, Lana Wood, and a lot of people who were in Johnny's last film, now called The Marshal, were in attendance. A lot of money was raised and a site was set up for Johnny, a GoFundMe page that helps him. A lot of you out there have contributed, and some of you, just a small amount, have said, well, we see online that he's a millionaire. Well, I can tell you that that's really not true. He was about 11 years old when he started The Rifleman. There were no residuals back then. The show lasted five or six years, it was gone. He's had a terrific life, he's a musician. He played at my wedding with an orchestra. In fact, we've got a few clips that you haven't seen that we've put together that I think you'll enjoy. Charlotte was homesick when I spoke to her on the phone. She wasn't even allowed to go see Johnny. She had a cold, and with so much of this virus going on, Johnny's at lockdown at his facility. They're taking very, very good care of him, but it costs money to stay there. It's just noon. You're supposed to be in school. Well, I stopped by Hattie's at lunchtime to get the mail. This came for you. It's got to be the money. Yeah, so you're playing hooky? Well, I've never seen $500 before. Yeah, you're not going to see it now either. He's comfortable. He's happy. He's doing a lot of things like playing volleyball with balloons and he interacts with the people, but he, he can't put sentences together anymore. He can't speak. And it's getting tougher and tougher for him, and it's sad for us to watch that happen. Today on A Word on Westerns, we have a special guest who got an Emmy nomination for uh, Best Supporting Actor in a Series, the Rifleman was the series. The actor is our dear friend, Johnny Crawford. Johnny Crawford, could you join us up here? Howdy, pal. How are you? <laughs> You're long-winded, you know? <laughs> which is which, it's very much like cowboys because they're lonely a lot on the prairie and stuff. It's, uh... I'm lonely and Johnny's here now. That's, uh, I'm glad you're here, Johnny. Johnny Thanks. is multifaceted, multi-talented. This man Thank leads you. a big swing band Thanks. that is wonderful. It's the sweet music that we all love Thanks. so much. And he played at my wedding Thanks. and at my divorce. Thanks. No, no, Thanks. no. <laughs> I'm still happily married because the music was so sweet. I always wanted to know when I went on auditions if any of the... Uh, directors uh, that were I was auditioning for if they had worked in silent films because uh, I loved silent films. I was very peculiar and um, so uh, and they would give me stories like um, Henry Hathaway. I had a great audition with him. We talked about Real Rogers the whole time because he had been a, a, an assistant director uh, in the in the silent days, wow! And before he became a full director, I know you love Will Rogers too because uh, yeah. silent movies. You you've talked yeah. about silent movies and about how when the people would come on the Rifleman, you would quiz them in the same way. Yeah. So I brought a little list. Um, actually, I would I just drew it up while I was sitting here listening to um, everybody, and um, 
somebody mentioned that there were no, uh, or that there was a, a champion cowboy that came from New York. And as a fact, I had my picture taken with him uh, at a rodeo in Atlanta, Georgia in 1961, I think, Harry Tompkins. And he was, he was uh, about the, my height, maybe even smaller. And very friendly, nice, sweet guy, you know. And, and he was my hero. And, um, and I saw him in the national finals when they were held in Los Angeles in 1964, I think, or 63. And uh, he, he rode uh, bulls, and I think he rode bareback horses too. But he was a, a city guy who, who thought that he could stay on bulls, you know, and he could. And uh, his, there's a great photograph of Harry Tompkins. Uh, if you get, go to the internet and just type in Harry Tompkins, and there'll be a wonderful photograph of him riding a bull. And, and the bull's you know, uh, in the middle of his leap. And, and Harry's, this is his little finger. He always rode with his little finger up here like this. And, and he, he's looking at the photographer smiling with his little finger like this. <laughs> I mean, it's classic. So well, You rode bulls, too. Uh, well, I got on them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to mention some other um, illustrious people to me who I got to work with on the Rifleman during that period of time. And I, and I can't remember all of them, but... Uh, um, Eva Novak was a silent movie star. She was born in 1898, and she was doing, still doing work, but she was a leading lady as early as 1918 with, in films with Tom Mix, and uh, she was very sweet. She, um, after I met her on the show and one time, she sent me a couple of pictures of, of herself uh, from uh, a uh, William S. Hart film. Still have that. And uh, never saw her again after that one. But she was younger than I am now. Well, you know, how strange is that? <laughs> uh, and uh, so Buddy Roosevelt, he was a, a cowboy star in the, in the, in the 20s and uh, made a lot of things. And I, he was on the set many times. Was he an extra on The Rifleman? Or yeah. Did he have lines? He, he, no, I don't think so. He might have at one time, uh, uh, you know, but... But he was happy just to be there, and he was, he was pretty elderly by that time. How did you find out he was there, that it was Buddy Rose? Well, because uh, the assistant directors knew that I wanted to meet people who had worked in silent films. And so they brought them, you know, and, and he was a great guy. He signed two pictures to me, one of him uh, in his heyday, and another one uh, with him, you know, that was at that time that I met him, and he, he wrote um, something like, uh, uh, your, your has-been friend. <laughs> 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 That's the way I sign things now. <laughs> uh, but also, Paul Fix, who played uh, Mark McCain, no, uh, Sheriff Micah. Micah. Sheriff Micah. Who played the kid? Oh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Paul Fix was in silent films, and he gave me a book, the, an industry book that he had gotten when he came to Hollywood. Um, he was going to become an actor, and he bought this uh, book uh, that had uh, all the information for the industry, the film industry. And um, well, well, Paul Fix, uh, Micah, because you worked with him every week for, for yeah. years, uh -huh. uh, Johnny bought his house, and that's the house that uh, Marilyn Carey, who married Dobie Carey, that's where they met. His daughter. That's where they met. I was at dinner at Johnny's house one time. This was after Johnny owned the house, and he invited my wife and me, but he also invited Harry Carey and Marilyn Carey. And Marilyn hadn't been at that house for years, but she grew up in that house, and she took me to the back part where you were on kind of a cliff, and there, she looked over and she says, see that down there, that door, that entrance to this little area? She yeah. said... I used to see John Wayne bring his girlfriends back there when she was a little girl. Because Paul Fix was a, an acting coach for Duke. 
did he did you learn much from Paul Fix from working with him? Oh yeah, he was um, you know terrific, and and he, and he was I, I can imitate him on screen and off screen. This is him as 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 the sheriff, and if if they ever remake the, the show, I'm ready for that role. <laughs> but uh, you know he was squinty eyed, and he had a bad hand like this, and uh, and then they would yell cut. And he would go. <laughs> and then he, we, we would have, you know, ask him a story. Did you ever work with Clark Gable? And he said, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and then he talked about this. They used to go gol golfing together, you know. And, and they were, this was, you know, before... Either one of them had really gotten a break. I mean, I, I, and Paul never did become a star, but he was in everything. As a matter of fact, uh, Richard Band just uh, showed us a, a film recently. Uh, what's it called? The Free Eats. Three, Free Eats, yeah. And, um, and Paul Fix, he said, you won't believe it, but Paul Fix is in this, it was in, in our gang, uh, Two Reeler. And uh, I didn't see him in there. And, uh, and then he said, uh, there were, I can't tell the whole story very quick, you know, I, I, but anyway, he was um, a, a thief posing as an old lady. <laughs> and, and by God, it was him, it was him. And then Snub Pollard, uh, he was Snub a big Hal Roach comedy star, yeah. Snub Pollard. And, and Max in it. Yeah. And, um, and he worked continually until he died. He, you know, uh, he's, he takes the umbrella away from Gene, what's his name? Kelly. Um, <laughs> uh, singing in the Rain. And, and Singing in the Rain, right, yeah. Well, I want to say, Johnny. I have one more thing to... I'm, <laughs> I was gonna say it's been a real honor to be with them. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Maybe later. Yeah. Okay. Um, Howard Hawks was a very sweet, nice guy, and even auditioned me again another time later on for uh, the, the next movie um, that they did and uh, uh, Rio Lobo. Rio Lobo, and and uh, I wasn't right for the part because they already had another guy with dark hair. Um, but uh, and playing one of the other roles, and but before that, I I uh, learned a big lesson. After the Rifleman was over, um, you know the uh, offers were pouring in, <laughs> and uh, um, not really, but uh, uh, so I I was up for the um, that film. Real Lobo? No, the one before that we were talking about when I first came up here and started forgetting everything. <laughs> what? The, no, no, no. No, the movie, Eldorado was the one movie, he was in. Dean Martin, John uh, Wayne. Uh, uh, Sons of Katie Elder. Yes. So, uh, okay, so I had this wonderful <laughs> audition with the director of um, that film. Henry Hathaway. Henry Hathaway. <laughs> And he was, he was terrific. He loved that I knew who Will Rogers was, you know, and, and, uh, and, and I think he, he was a fan of Buddy Roosevelt too. And, <laughs> and I still have a 16 millimeter uh, um, episode of one of Buddy's films. He was, uh, oh, I'm, now, now let's stay on uh, this uh, subject of, what's Sons the name of, of Katie Elder. Sons of Katie Eller. <laughs> For some reason, I have a hard time remembering that title because after this wonderful audition with Henry Hathaway, he, he said, okay, now you just have to go up there and meet the producer, <laughs> uh, you know, which Hal was Wallace. Hal Wallace and never met him before. So I was taken to the, to, to the uh, big building and to the top floor and, and uh, I walked into his office, I was led in there, and he had like two guys up against the wall on one side of the office and maybe another or two or three on this side of the office all ready to do anything he wanted. And he was behind this big desk and, and 
And I walked in, and I, I was pretty confident, actually. I thought, well, I had a great audition with, with the director, so this should be a piece of cake. And, and uh, I was, a chair was brought out and put in front of his desk, and, and uh, it was indicated for me to sit there, and he was just looking at me the whole time. You know? And I sat down and <clears throat> tried to get comfortable and crossed a leg and, you know, I'm trying to... And uh, finally he said, well, what have you done? <laughs> and I, very fast, all these thoughts went through my mind. Um, uh, well, geez, does he watch television? Uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know. I, so I finally came up with an answer for, for it, and it, and it was this. He said, what have you done? And I said, about what? <laughs> Let's hear it for Johnny Crawford, okay? Johnny, thanks. Okay, thanks. We love you, Johnny, and thank you all out there for loving him too. <laughs>